Welcome to the Plan 6 Parts video. Welcome to part 3 of engine removal. So, um, I cut part 2 a little short because uh, the Spitfire I have over there was out for sale and it started to rain and I realised it, so I had to cut the video a little short so I'll go out and retrieve it. So, all's good anyway. Got a little bit on the inside, but everything's good. Okay, so I've just taken the last nut off this and to remove the, uh, the last carver. I said I left the bucket down there to purposely catch them. Um, but someone asked, sorry, let's put it. All the last, the nuts are coming off. Fuel's coming out, wipe it quick. And do you know what? Fuel's actually good for cleaning up the engine bay, believe it or not. Uh, when I worked in car garage, I used to actually do that. Put the put fuel uh, in a spray gun and actually spray the engine and around it was good. Anyway, um, if, in case you're wondering, someone's going to ask a question how do you know which carburetor you have? Um, on the side here, and I'm gonna try to zoom in so you can see the little sta little stamp. And this one says A B. A B for a B for an early model. So usually most A Bs are non-adjustable, but there is a adjustable one. Well I came across one. Not to say somebody had put inner fittings off a later one inside, but usually the A Bs are for the early models and are non-adjustable. So they should belong on like uh, 69, 70, 71, so on. Uh, for actual years, this doesn't have it, but there's a little tag that's usually hanging on the corner here. A little, uh, a little brass tag of something along. It has a stamp and it has a number on it. You can actually follow that number and see for exactly which year these are actually for. So um, that's how you identify them. So in case anybody wants to know which carburetor you have, that's how you know. But again, seek knowledge of somebody who knows carburetors inside out. Now, uh, I shot myself a little bit in the foot there because I said I'd walk my way down and I didn't take the charcoal canister off to make life easy for me to get into this end, so... Silly me. So I'm going to do it now. Um, Again, I've seen this on a couple of cars with them sitting here. Um, it depends what bracket you have, and obviously there's a particular bracket that goes down to the engine mount to hold this on. Um, yeah, they can sit wherever you like, it doesn't make a difference. But obviously when you're running, as long as you're running the plumbing to it. Um, so I said most of the time it's on the side of the radiator. Which in turn, I'll give it this, if it's in here, it's not in the way, and it'll probably be easier to get the uh, shroud in because this does make it a little awkward, but to be honest, the, the shrouds you get, even the ones I sell here at Plan 6 Parts, are not the greatest fitting. They usually always bend too much, it's like they're too, a little too big. So, but it is what it is. Right, we, we do what we have. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this charcoal canister off, I'm going to take the pipe gun off, and then I'm going to start removing the uh, intake manifolds and get down to the exhaust manifold. So when you remove this nut and bolt, again there's nothing special about this, it's just the uh, just a nut and bolt. If you're gonna reuse it, again just put the nut in it so you don't lose it and keep it somewhere safe. In this case, in the box I have. Alright. So the pipe that's on this one was still connected. Um, just be mindful, this is the one that goes from the tank. So make sure you tuck that out of the way when you go to take the engine out. Because um, you have, this is a two pot one. So basically one is for your vacuum, basically from the top of the, the valve cover. And the other one is basically your breeder hose that goes all the way to an, a canister, another canister that's actually on the quarter panel, in a quarter panel on the passenger side. And that's where it goes. The later models, it goes straight from here to um, through another little smaller canister just on top of the, the tank itself. But the early models went from the edge of the tank, it's a breather that comes in from the fuel cap, goes in, goes into the back onto the side, goes in, comes back out and goes all the way back up to here, just for the fumes. So, hope you got all that. 
And we didn't. Uh, I know. Um, I know. Don't buy from Moss, but Moss Motors does have again. Their one has, does have a good uh, layout of the directions and where it's meant to go. All right. So now we have this off. We can take the rest of the uh, holes off. Been on so long, it's a good chance it's going to be rusty in here. Just kind of pry it off from it. Again, if you're gonna do these uh, recommendation, get new clamps. If you're not long enough, oh good god, so obvious the holes. Then again, it couldn't have been under the longest because it's, it should be green. So obviously, at some point it got replaced. When? Usually the trick to getting these off and the stuff is to twist them a bit and usually crack. However, there we go. So, not torn. Just enough to break the seized on lines. Alright, so we have a cable tie holding this one. Uh, do I have a snip here? Nope. Yes? No? No? Yes, no. We'll leave that. Okay, next we're gonna do is take our uh, intake manifold off. Uh, we do have one more hose here. So we have three bolts on the top. Let me zoom in, sorry, do you know what? I'm probably so far away you can't even see. Actually, let me move the camera, make it easier. Yep. All right, so the intake, we have our three on the top. But then we have a lot of nuts at the bottom. So on the bottom half of it, there's one that shares either side. So this with the exhaust manifold, this side of the exhaust, this one. So there's basically two, four, six on the bottom that need to come out as well. I can pretty much guarantee you, most of the times you take it off, the nut is not gonna come out, the entire piece is gonna come out. The whole lot in one go. And you'll see, it always happens. So I don't need to take this necessarily, these off completely, yeah, I don't have to. But I'll leave the top one on because it's the easiest one to get to. Because again, these are the sort of nuts that, you put these on first when you're going in because it's, it sits there and you have to sort of barely get them on it and push it in as you go along because there's just not enough room for it. And this one you can put a bolt in, technically one straight in. But these ones, theoretically you could actually, I've, I've done it. You'd have to run the bolt in here first and then put it down and slide it in and, and tighten it to pull it in. It can be done if the treads on your, uh, if the treads on these ever went completely wrong and you don't have any spare ones, you can use uh, fine tread bolts. I think lengthwise you're probably looking at about, I don't know, an inch and a half maybe. Should be at least about three three quarters of an inch going in. Make sure you have enough bite in there. There's a trick to measuring it, and hopefully I'll remember. I'm gonna go to put them back on when I do the engine. I'll show you a trick on how to measure in case you do need to put a bolt in there. All right, so now we're gonna have to start taking off the. The 
bottom nuts. Right, so the one at the corner here is always the easiest to get there because you can see that one. See the whole the whole piece comes out. Um, the wing nut is fine. And now that I can see more, I can look down and see. I can just barely see it, but obviously uh, the engine mounts have seen better days, so they'll get replaced. So to take all these out, and like I said, it's most likely they'll all come out anyway. And what you can do is you can always put this in a, in a vise or whatever and take the nut off. Um, and the reason why I won't take the whole lot out is because if you do, it's going to come out, the, the inlet is going to come out. Um, Oh, sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. The inlet will come out, but I won't take the exhaust manifold ones off, these ones. The reason why is I'll keep them in position to help me unbolt the, uh, the exhaust down there. Now, if you happen to be able to take the exhaust off further down the line, I recommend you do that. It's a lot easier than having the, uh, the down pipes sticking up while you go to put the engine in. The less that's in the engine bay, the better. Never know what you find. I say that because people put some funky stuff on them to hold them in. So, one, two, one, two. It's easy taking these off, but you'll find putting them back on a pain in the uh, oh, the rear end because let me show you. Well, that's why I always like to check. Someone obviously ran out and just <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> These, um, these, as you can see, have little, uh, little, let me say, let me say, call them ribs, little lumps on them, and there's little divots on the inside of the uh, exhaust manifold and the inlet, and basically they just sit in and stops them wiggling, so they sort of line up. So it's the hard part is getting these to line up in them little holes. Wow. Well, I've seen some funky stuff, but I've never seen anybody use a big massive nut. Oh, <laughs> you know what? You probably hadn't got one, lost it, had no more, and that's what you had. Well, do you know what? People have to improvise, I'll give it that. At least improvise for a while and change it back. It shouldn't be a pyramid thing, but. And obviously, this stud is wrong because it's way too long. 
The original one for this one, the smaller one actually bolts in. And you actually put three bolts in. They're pretty long, they're about four, four inches long or something like that. Pretty long. So again, it's been improvised, improvised, so it's hard. It's hard for me to put them back together because going back together the same way somebody had them, I can't do that. I'd rather put them back to the original. Or at least what works the best. All right, that's my screwdriver again. Should have took the holes off first. This uh, clutch cable is gonna keep getting in my way as usual. So, what I plan on doing, I plan on doing Weber's with the, uh, the electronic choke so I can move, move that all together. Great. One less thing to worry about. All right. And there's our, sorry, it was zoomed in a bit. There's our inlet manifold. And if you can see here, hopefully you can see with the light, let me zoom in a bit. But you'll see the little, uh, hopefully the focus is there. Oh, there's the little divots as you can see that the clamp goes into. There's one there, and then the other one is basically on the uh, exhaust manifold. So it basically sits in in the groove. The little piece that sits out in the same thing, so it crosses up, studs in the middle, and it pushes the two of them in. All right, now we have that off. So where we want to go to next is, ideally is take the exhaust. However, again, here's gonna be the hard part is getting these out. There's a great chance they're seized and I probably won't, I don't know if I'm gonna to have to do a video on it because it's probably gonna take me a bit of time. Because it looks pretty rusty um, and it might take a little while to get that off. So what we're here, what we're gonna do is we are going to disconnect the rest of this hose. The return pipe, should I say? Well, it connects to the return pipe. Now we're using the wrong one again. Who invented the flathead screw? It's been terrible. Leakage. Okay. It's right over a vent, it's right over the basement, so uh, it already leaked fuel down there, so I don't fancy more going down. Alright, I'm gonna take all these nuts and I'm gonna put them all in the bucket. Otherwise I'll end up with a collection here. Next thing we look at is our heater valve. So we're going to disconnect our heater valve in the same sort of way. I just had to screw it over. I'm good. Now, I will disconnect it down here just because, again, it's just one of those ones that gets in the way. It's just enough to bug you when you go to actually take the, uh, the engine out. And again, for these as well, and don't get me wrong, if you're using your, uh, if you're using the same piping, you can do the same thing with the uh, 
your tubing here as you do with the radiator. Like I said, you can put them in vinegar and boil them and clean them out so they clean out all the inside and all the gunk and crap. And then again, just make sure you get rinsed out uh, well and good. That's the main thing. And then yes, you can reuse them. But again, once you're taking it apart. For most people, don't get me wrong, if you're taking the engine out because you're getting it rebuilt, there's a high likely chance you might as well just replace the holes with brand new stuff. Especially if it's been in the car for 30 years. Uh, you're going this far, there's no sense in cheaping out on certain things. I'm sure many people have kept pulling it and it's given up and then you go flying. All right, so now we have a, we're having a better look all in here. The uh, choke cable is still getting in the way. So um, what can we do next is, we don't want to remove obviously the engine mounts yet. Um, because even with this bracket, it'd be nice to take this bracket off. I don't want to put stress on just two bolts instead of the four. Uh, so what we can do is we can disconnect our Start them over. I think it's bigger than a half, actually. Oh, it is. And again, if you're taking it off, you're rebuilding your engine. Uh, I know it probably works absolutely fine and never fa never fails. But at some point, it's going to give up the ghost. Let's face it. At some point, it has to give up. So, since you have it disconnected, again, it's always the best time to go get a, a refurbished, redone. Um, just for the sake of it, I mean, because you're, you're doing the engine for it to last another, God, 50 years. So, if the thing has already been running for 50 years, you really think it's going to keep going and last 100? No. So, um, yeah, go get it checked out. You can always upgrade it, and so on and so forth. Now, that's that out. That eventually, when we're going to afford it down, I'll actually take the starter motor out as I walk my way around and take the bolts off. Um, we still have this take, cable to take off. A funny feeling it's not going to go yet. Funny feeling this is the wrong side as well. Isn't it? Oh, very good. The small one, I guess not. Oh, back to this again. I'm just lucky I have two toolboxes here, I just happen to have one behind me. Alright, heater valve. Um, do you have to take it out? Ah, do you know what? You're better off. Let me shove that down there. You're better off to remove it just because when the engine comes up, it's less likely to touch. You don't want it really to, but you don't have to. Either way, the engine's getting rebuilt, it's coming out either way, so that's your choice. Um, sorry, I'm playing with the zoom here. All right, so uh, that's the manifold off now. So, what we'll do is, I suppose that's it for part three. Um, on part four, because it's getting late in the afternoon, it's getting dark, so I'd rather do it on another day when I'm going to be to see a little brighter. And what I'll probably do is I'm going to crack at the nuts here for the exhaust, and at least have that done before I do the next one, because I don't really waste. Nobody wants to see me a half an hour struggling with them. Um, I'm tempted to see one. Tempted to try one and see how how stuck you really are. See if I have the right one. I think they're bigger than, I'm pretty sure these are bigger than I can. Yeah, 
Alright, I'll try it. Let's see, see how it's going to do. Before I realize I'll have the whole toolbox over here. I'm gonna get the ratchet from down below and come up with it and crank it that way. I'd have to see how, how stiff it was. So hopefully, worst case, what we'll do is, if it really is that stiff, um, the nuts down there, what we'll do is again, heat is everything. Get the little blow torch because now we've created a nice bit of room. Uh, if you wanted to take the starter motor off and it allows you to put a bit of heat here to allow to take the nuts off without hitting that in plastic or anything. Obviously, if there's any fuel you've taken out, make sure the fuel's all dried up in case. Um, and yeah, I'll get that off, and then it will allow me then to take the final four studs out and take the exhaust manifold out. And before you realize you're getting there, you're getting pretty quick. Um, yeah, so join me in part four. Hopefully, I'll have these disconnected, and we'll start here. And um, we should be able to pretty much take everything else off it. Um, and then the brace, and then get ready to... Uh, undo the gearbox from the engine itself there is a, i'm not saying it's a little trick but i have my own little way of doing it and i'll go through what i do to make life easy to take it out um yeah so uh join me in part four so uh again thanks for watching any comments questions concerns give me a show uh, i'll try to help you out as best i can so see you in the next part